there's a whole bunch of people just piling in right now, guys. So I'm just going to wait an extra few seconds to make sure that everyone can log in, see me. Uh, I'll do a quick explanation on uh, on Waitroom, how it works, is if you want to chat and ask questions, you just you hit the Join the Queue button. If you want to watch, just keep watching the way you are right now. Um, everyone who, who goes up gets a two-minute window to ask whatever questions you want to ask. I'm happy to do a, you know, have a pretty frank conversation about most things. Um, not going to discuss uh, any related to token prices, et cetera, so don't even ask those questions, please. But um, definitely want to talk about um, the, uh, the infrastructure we're building and the announcements for today. So um, really looking forward to those, those related questions. OK, I think we're good. Uh, I'm going to hit the start. The, I'm actually going to I'll start with the, with the preamble, and then we can go start the queue in a few minutes. But uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm, uh, I'm Vinny Lingham. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Civic. Um, it's a blockchain-based identity platform and protocol that we've been building for a number of years. Um, you know, to, to give you some background on what Civic's been doing over the years, we started off building identity on Bitcoin. Uh, in 2017, we, we had the scaling wars and issues around the fees and scalability of Bitcoin. We, we then moved to Ethereum to build up the smart contracting for the identity.com marketplace. Um, and you know, today we announced uh, that we're moving over to Solana. So it's been a journey of, of chains uh, trying to find a solution that helps us scale identity globally. And so we're excited to talk about that today and, and how we got to Solana. And, uh, um, you know, Anatoly from Solana will be joining me in about 20 odd minutes. Um, so uh, we'll definitely be excited to have him with us. Um, just the platform you guys are using, it's the Waitroom platform. Uh, I'm an investor in the company and, uh, you know, I'm just excited to what these guys have built, um, really using um, some pretty cool scheduling and, 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 and queuing features. So the idea is just, you, know, you get AMAs that are live video um, and people get a pre-allocated amount of time to ask a question, which is great. So it's, it's kind of fair versus having someone speak for differing amounts of time, and some people can ramble. So I'll, I'll try and I'll try and make sure I get to as many questions as possible, and so we can have a live AMA. This this is uh, pretty exciting. I think it's probably one of the biggest rooms I've hosted to date. Um, it's very much better. So you're having some problems, just email support at waitroom.com. But um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I think it's it's working pretty well. Um, you know, the purpose of this update is, is basically share a, a general update of, of Civic, where we're going, what we're thinking, what we're doing, um, and, and just interact with people in the community who are interested in decentralized identity and, and how it fits into the world and Web 3.0 uh, as it's evolving. Um, so I'm going to do the update for, a few, for the next few minutes, and then I'll take questions, and then we'll get to Anatoly. Um, so, the announcement today was that we are moving to Solana, and the key reasons for this is actually, you know, like obviously costs are important, and, and Ethereum fees have, you know, I've been sort of vocal this on, on Twitter. It's, it's been difficult for companies building um, use cases other than DeFi right now. I guess even DeFi is getting expensive for the mass market. Uh, NFTs, I suppose, when you're selling a sixty million dollar. Um, Item, you know, some gas fees don't really hurt you much, but just in general, when you're doing attestations on a blockchain and you're trying to build a blockchain, you can't have the you can't have a slow blockchain and you cannot have high fees, which is what we're struggling with on Ethereum right now. So we went through a process to look at all the um, uh, all the different you know, layer one solutions out there and layer two to some extent, um, and we narrowed it down to Solana. Now uh, I've known the Solana team since the beginning. I've uh, you know I I, I worked with them in the early days when they were trying to raise funding and brought them to Multicoin. And I think that the, what they've been building and executed on in the past couple of years is has been pretty uh, impressive, uh, to say the least. And we think that for the identity use case, building out DID infrastructure on Solana is actually a really good, and I guess it's a bold move for us, but we realized that we cannot stay on Ethereum any longer. And uh, when we looked at the solutions, we felt Solana was the best suited for our use case, as well as just scale and cost in general and speed. Um, Solana's throughput and speed is just unparalleled uh, today. And so we're, we're excited to make the move and we're um, we're very happy that we, ha we, we have. And I, th I think once we made the decision and started looking deeper into it, it just becomes more and more obvious that we should have done this probably a long time ago. Um, 
instead of struggling on Ethereum. Um, you know, our our kind of sister foundation, identity.com, has also made the move over. So it actually gives us a lot of, um, you know, I guess composability in some sense where the infrastructure that we're running identity on will be compatible with um, identity.com and, and, and Civic and we can, we can contribute to the code base on both sides. So everyone is really happy to be running on Solana, I think, at this point. And so, um, you know, unfortunately, we, we've had to make some tough decisions and we decided to, to sunset the health key product uh, for many reasons. I think uh, as we dug deeper into the, the industry, we saw a lot of the big players um, are getting into that. Governments are getting into it. It's, been, it's going to become very politicized. We tried getting data, health data, securely, privately, and we just we're just not comfortable that we can we can um, live up to the ethos of the company in terms of privacy, um, preserving uh, data gathering, and building a, a health wallet that makes sense uh, for people and to store all your health records on. And the health industry is very very complicated. So um, you know, I think at the end of the day, we just decided that we're going to step back from this and let the, the bigger guys play out. And if you want to trust them with their health records, then you're free to. But we don't think it lives up to what we want to do as a company, decentralizing identity as well as healthcare. And so we made the tough decision to to sunset that product. But we're very excited about um, what we do with Solana, the integration. And we're very excited about um, Civic.Finance, which really is an evolution of our current wallet product in the sense that um, we were previously supporting Ethereum. And, and just to be frank, the gas fees to create an Ethereum wallet for us right now are like $500 per user. It, it's just not, it's not something, we've had to disable it. So even if you download Civic, you can get a Bitcoin wallet. We can't give you an Ethereum wallet, which is kind of sad. Um, but we're going to be making that wallet a Solana wallet and we'll be able to support, support SPL tokens. Uh, we'll be able to do a lot more with um, with that wallet and and uh, running on Solana. So that's the exciting part about it. We also think that Solana becomes, um, you know, more of a gateway. Well, uh, sorry, sorry, finance becomes a gateway into the Solana universe. We think that um, it plays out very interestingly as you, you look at the, the costs and the fees. Um, you know, my views on Ethereum, I guess, play into this because I think Ethereum is a great test bed and it's a global sort of network that you can experiment with things like NFTs, DeFi, but ultimately, you know, if it can't scale and it's not cost effective for anyone but whales, uh, you know, people need to use it elsewhere. So I think that there'll be a number of companies like us joining the Solana ecosystem to build out things like DeFi, NFTs, etc. And maybe it's just a different market. Maybe it's, um, you, know, it, you know, Ethereum may just own the NFT market. We don't know how that plays out, but we think that for what we're trying to do with decentralized IDs, we can't play in the Ethereum ecosystem with the current fees, so we have to make the move. And Civic has never been one of those companies and, and projects that, you know, uh, are the, the last movers. We always tend to be the first movers on things and we try and get in early. And I think this is one of those examples where we're one of the first companies to publicly move from Ethereum to uh, a different chain like this. And uh, we're making, and it's, it's years of infrastructure that has support across. So uh, appreciate that with the resource constraints, we were basically just doubling down in Solana and saying, we're going to sunset health key and just double down and build out a good infrastructure on Solana. And we think that it can help the scale. So I'm going to take Q&A. We have a whole bunch of people in here and let's, let's see how it goes. And i um, excited to engage with the community in live video. So I'll start with you. Can you hear me? Hey, how's it going, man? Nice to meet you. Hi, Hi man. Thanks. Nice to meet you too. Hi, I'm Kivo from Holland. Yes. And um, I liked your project a lot, and I really hope it goes really well. Um, I just have a, a question about the GDPR. Uh, that's very important in um, in Europe and, of course, in Holland. Um, in Holland, they're already starting something in the they're in the early phases of a Corona passport, and that goes really well into the uh, digital identity. Um, can you tell me a bit of your European goals? So GDPR compliance has been something which has been very close to what we design around as a company and as a project. So the the the, the architecture of civic technologies and identity.com is really that we don't store data. We allow you to store your own data and we allow you nice. to pull your data in privately and securely into your own digital wallet. And so what what, what this really means is that when it, when it comes to data privacy regulations, we actually, because we don't hold data, we don't have to do, there's nothing we have to do. We're giving you your data. 
And what the health mm-hmm. part, part of the problems are, because of the number of intermediaries that have the data, and when you get it, and when you give it to someone, um, it's it, it's a bit of a problem for them to to ensure compliance with GDPR and some of the other things. So I think what we're going to see is a number of health passports emerge from different countries, different companies, etc., mm-hmm. and they'll find out some level of oper- operability. But I think people have to be uh, accept the fact that you know there may be data privacy uh, issues with that, and that's just the way it is right now. And, and we, that's why we're, we're going to sunset that product. Okay, man. Good luck. Thanks. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Good to see you. Carlos, there we go. Hi, Vinny. How's it going? Hey, nice to meet you. Can you hear me well? Cool. Yeah, I can hear you. Nice to meet you as well. Great. So I, I was curious, uh, Vinny, um, have you guys uh, utilized or have have uh, attempted to uh, contemplate utilization of your identification uh, capabilities in terms of um, like authenticating a caller. So, like for example, like our organization, um, we work in the fintech industry. You know, we have just over six thousand FTEs, and we do a lot of outbound calls to do like fraud investigations, etc. And you know, we spend upwards times of like two or three minutes just authenticating that it is the customer who we're talking to on the other line. Yeah. So just you know, time and cost savings if they just you know were able to tap you know your app and identify themselves we would we would shave off a lot right so i was wondering have you guys seen that type of workflow with any you know existing solutions what partners you guys may have yeah so th- this is possible to do i mean this would this would be a custom type of integration if we had okay. if you had thousands of employees or whatever it is and you want to do it with us uh we'd give you an sdk that you could put into your you know your corporate app in your phone and maybe just have somebody doing a push notification to authenticate when they call in. Um, but uh, it is it is possible. It's not, I would say, a core mainstream use case for us right now. But again, you know, if companies want to do this sort of thing, we, we you know we do have the, the, obviously the infrastructure to do it. It's just not something we I like. Uh, I know banks use like text messaging, so that you know they'll send you a text while yeah. you're on the phone, and, and so that's that can be done by push notification as well. Um, the use cases for, for for identity is really endless, and it's really about finding ones that we think really lead to some sort of breakout usage of decentralized um, identification. Um, and it, it's hard for a small group to do that. Understood. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks again. Christian. Thanks for joining. Okay. Evan, uh, it's Evan. Evan, hey, nice to meet you. Hey, Vinny, how are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great. Great, fantastic. Uh, so my name is Evan Huddleston. I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Happy Hour. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to talk with your team a little bit about what we're building. Uh, it's a marketing platform for bars and restaurants on a global scale. And we think that one of the biggest problems that we're going to be facing is why does someone have to show all of their personal identification information to someone to simply get a drink? Um, we think that your platform and your technology is going to be pivotal to us growing at scale globally. Um, but the problem for us as a startup right now, um, you know, we're applying to Y Combinator, we're looking to get funding before the end of the year. But um, at, at current pace, um, you know, uh, a quarter per verification becomes really expensive for us if we start scaling into thousands, tens of thousands of users. Um, with this move to Solana, um, do you um, view the fees uh, to be going down for the verification processes that you have listed currently, um, or maybe like a different sort of API or SDK setup that would make this more affordable for technical founders like myself? So are you looking at uh, survey.com forward slash pricing? That, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, so we just announced that today. I, I can say that at scale that th- those prices do come down uh, quite significantly. Um, you know, if you look at the number of transactions, we're looking at you know, two and a half thousand to 30,000 monthly active users um, at scale. But like, it's one of those things where I think even small technical founders like yourself, and you know, if you guys w- wanted some sort of, um, you know, we, we can figure out something to give you guys some sort of buffer uh, on the pricing, at least while you're ramping up. We do know that it, it does get a little pricey. Uh, on the, it, it, one of the problems, so one of the things that we have to deal with is the network effect. The bigger the network, uh, and I'm, I'll, I'm, you're gonna go, I'm gonna hold the queue so I can finish this point before the next person joins. Um, but uh, thanks, thanks for your question, Aaron. So, one of the one of the things about dropping the cost of verification is it's about the network effect. So, the more people we have in the network, the cheaper it gets. And the reason is the way we do the cost structure is even though we're charging twenty five cents, for example, um, the cost to verify someone is north of 
you know, two or three or four bucks just from driver's license scanning, uh, uh, facial recognition, the tech that goes into all that. So then, you know, the fact that you're paying a fraction of what it costs means that we have to eat the cost of, the, let's, say, let's just say it's 250, right? We have to eat the cost of the 250, but every time that person uses the, the device, uh, we get 25 cents back. So we have to get them to use it 10 times to break even in theory. Now, if the network got really big and people use the, the app 50 times or 100 times a year, we can bring down the average cost per transaction. But we still have to make, obviously recoup the cost of verification because there are hard costs that we have to pay to our vendors to, you know, for example, biometric or, or document checking, et cetera. And so th that's the real issue. Uh, I still think that Civic is going to be and is the cheapest product in the market right now with our new pricing that we've announced, so Civic.com for just pricing. Um, and if you look at those pricing, I don't think you'll get it anywhere else because we are we have built reusable identification. And so anyone who's not using reusable, you're paying the full cost of a, a one-time use. And that's how we're bringing price down. So we're, we're very excited that this opens up new markets for people. Uh, and and you know, we've done vending machines in the past. We've announced that stuff. And we've got vending machine partners out there working on this. Vending machine is a good example. Where they're happy to charge 25 cents for a beer, which costs 4 50 or 5 bucks. Because if they do a full verification, that would cost 2 50 and a beer is you know, 5 bucks. So uh, you know, we think the reusable nature of identity is what's important here. Becca, Hi, hey. Benny. How's it going? How's it going? Yeah. Hey guys, uh, full disclosure, I'm from Civic. I'm just hopping in the queue because it was a little low on people. So I want to encourage all of you 163 viewers to get on here and um, ask me some questions before Anatoly hops on in about 10 minutes or so. Um, but, uh, oh, and one other thing, if you're having connectivity issues, lower left-hand corner of your web browser, um, you can click on the gear wheel and lower the quality of your camera. Um, so that should help with some of the connectivity issues. But so Vinny, since I have you on, I was hoping to ask you to just kind of expand a little bit on the timing of this announcement. Why is it important to make this move now? Um, we're, we're making a, a big blockchain move. Um, we're early in doing this. And um, I think you've talked a little bit about being a first mover, getting in there first. Um, can you just talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So th thanks, Becca. Like, I, I think if if um, if we look at how DeFi has exploded and even our NFTs are taking off, and we make the assumption that people have to um, you know find other places to to run these projects and and and, and take these use cases off off Ethereum because of the cost, where are they going to go? So we think Ethereum is uh, we think Solana is one of the places that it makes the most sense to go to just because of the cost and the speed, especially. And then uh, we think that like the, the Sonic system is growing rapidly and there's need for identity infrastructure there um, as well. And so I think just being early in a fast growing ecosystem is, a, is just a really good accelerant for what we're doing. And we need, we need to accelerate DIDs, decentralized identities into the world. And we think this is the best way to do it. So, it, you know, yes, we're early, but I think the vectors are all there for this to be a successful um, move for us. And we, as I said, we can't stay on Ethereum. Uh, it's just not economically uh, you know, an option for us. Thanks, Becca. Carlo, hey. Thanks, Vinny. I just had a follow-up question. Oh, I was wondering, <laughs> and, and Becca kind of stole, uh, Becca kind of stole my thunder, but I was wondering, you know, what, uh, what kind of took so long to make this decision to move over to Solana? You know, uh, COVID hit last year, and uh, obviously everyone knows that. <laughs> and uh, I right. think midway through the year, we launched the Civic Wallet in, uh, it was June, July uh, timeframe. And when we designed the Civic Wallet initially, it was 25 cents of gas. By the time we took it down, it was $250 per user in gas. We're sitting at around 500, 500 bucks right now to execute the smart contracts. It's just like, you know, what took so long? Uh, it's about six months. And we, we, you know, we were a little bit, a little bit of hopium for three months that things could resolve, and we were, you know, hopeful for ETH 2.0. And, and the more we just dug into it, the more we realized that just, you know, single threaded computation blockchain is not, not going to scale for our, our needs. And moving to Solana was, you know, we took about three months to three or four months to evaluate the different options. We looked at pretty much all the top uh, uh, layer one solutions, and it was very clear that we had to move. And then Solana was the obvious choice for us uh, once we had done all the research. Got it. So you guys, uh, you guys are projecting kind of like a decrease in fees is going to lead to 
kind of more proliferation and use of the identification software? Because I imagine, right, because if you were charging those, if you had those gas fees, you probably passed it on to the client, so higher revenue, but it just wasn't, uh, you know, utilized as often because of the pricing, was that the issue? It's, it's hard to pass the pricing on to a consumer. Like, it's hard telling a consumer you should be paying yeah. the gas fees, but they, like, a lot of consumers don't even know what gas is. They just want to have, you know, a decentralized ID or a, a crypto wallet, and they're not used to paying gas fees for anything. Um, they want to just store their tokens. And so that's, it's just not, it's not palatable for us. Uh, we have to move, and obviously, from the yeah. I'm excited to see the future. Price. Yeah, thanks, Carlo. Great. Welcome back, Evan. Hey, I just wanted to say thank you so much for answering the question. And I totally agree. You know, we understand 100% that scalability is the number one thing that's going to drive down the cost of, you know, doing verification. Um, right now, what do you see as being the biggest challenge to adoption for uh, either the wallet or um, the products that you're going to be offering for businesses like ours that are looking to digitize things like passports, um, photo IDs, driver's licenses? that kind of stuff. What other real world use cases or partners do you guys have right now that are helping you grow that base? So we're working with a number of partners. We've announced Johnson Controls. Um, Johnson Controls was a, was a great use case because that was basically building access control and we were piloting it with them in New York. So you're going to a building in New York, which obviously we were launching in March of 2020. <laughs> it's a really bad time to go into buildings in New York. So that didn't happen. But uh, you know, building access controls one, I think any any industry that we can create a network effect in, for example, if we can start powering identity for creators across marketplaces, NFT creators, uh, and verifying their identities regardless of which marketplace they're selling their art on, that, that's a huge opportunity for us. Um, but it goes on. So like your, your use case with bars, we'd love for every bar to be saying, hey, civic identity is a very valid year and verified year, and you, know, you can come into the bar and get a beer. Uh, vending machines, exactly. So same thing. So we look for network effect sort of market opportunities because that really enhances the, the cost savings for us because if the same person is using the identity multiple times digitally, uh, we can now you know, amortize that cost over more transactions. So that, that, that's the way we look at it is how do we how, how do we go and partner with companies that have ecosystems or how do we go into ecosystems where there's a number of companies that need the same service? Well, we'd love to partner with you. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me and doing the AMA, Benny. It's great to meet you. Thanks, Evan. And you just email partners at civic.com and we've got the whole team of people willing to reach out to help you out.